So a question I've gotten on the channel in the comments and in other places at times has been, okay, I'm a little skeptical about Obsidian and Rome and these other tools on how they actually help you make connections between ideas that you wouldn't necessarily think of otherwise. I wanted to take a quick moment today to dive into that. Hello, my name is Justin with Effective Remote Work, and today we're going to take a look at how you can use a tool like Obsidian to find connections that you wouldn't necessarily think of otherwise. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind throughout the course of this video is that Obsidian is not making the connections for you. It is a tool that removes the friction to making these connections. While you're reading a work, you might be thinking of, oh, hey, this reminds me of this book over here, or hey, this reminds me of this idea. Those are the type of connections that Obsidian enables you to make. Now, there are some tools in here that help you kind of visualize those connections and potentially see ones that you hadn't made before. And we'll take a look at those in just a moment. But the main point of the software is to enable you to make connections between ideas, especially while you're in the note taking process. So for example, on the screen here, I have the book Time Off, which is by John Fitch and Max Frenzel. I've talked about it a couple of different times on the channel. Definitely recommend checking it out if you haven't yet. It's been transformative for me in my thinking about life and work and rest and how it all fits together. And you can see that I've taken a ton of notes here. I mean, this is a long note. There are lots of things, but there are little blurbs here that I have uh, linked, that I have other notes that I have taken off of it. So for example, this one here, caffeine interrupts your body from regulating the circadian rhythm. I found it really interesting. Uh, in a normal circadian rhythm, blah, 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 body builds up adenosine. It just kind of it, it fleshes it out and adds my own thoughts and ideas to it. But you can also see here too that I have, in the process of writing this note, realized that I can link this other permanent note, getting enough sleep is essential to being healthy, right in here. So that's one way that I've been able to make connections and how I would do that is if I'm thinking of an idea while I'm writing something down, I can literally just hit the angle brackets and start typing and say uh, caffeine. So that I can see here, <laughs> I get some extra ones here that's not exactly caffeine related. Maybe I'm looking for sleep. You can see sleep, sleep pressure, REM sleep helps solidify skills. So, I mean, I can start to just kind of browse through some of these ideas and related topics if I feel like there might be something that I remember that I've written down at some point, but I don't ex remember exactly what it is. I can start to link these notes together. Now, another interesting feature of Obsidian is, in fact, the ability to see the graph view. So if I open up over here, I'm going to open up the local graph. The, the big graph view is really helpful uh, to see the big context of your vault, but what I find the most helpful is to use the local graph when I'm trying to look for connections to other works, other ideas, and here is why. So you can see I have all of these different ideas that are connected up here from this main root note, time off. The thing is, is that you can scale the depth for these connections here. So this is just that depth one. This is the, the notes that are connected right to the main note. But if I up this to two, maybe even we'll try three. The whole graph starts to change. I can do neighbor links. I can link to tags. I can look to attachments, existing files only. I'll do that just for now because those are things that I have fleshed out. And now you can start to see that there is some clustering happening around this topic area that I can start to see that productivity and, and leisure and also some of this creativity stuff and also time off are all related to this topic area. Because through my work notes or the work notes that I've done around this specific book, they have tangential connections through other notes to that specific area. So for example, this note here, leisure-based productivity is focused on our holistic impact on society versus just our output at work. You can see that there's a direct impact. I've labeled this into productivity. And I've also put this under time off that this whole book time off is related to productivity. Now, if I turn off a couple things here, if I back this down to two, 
if I don't do outgoing links, well, we'll do just outgoing links, and then we'll turn off neighbor links, we'll turn off tags for now, because I don't really use tags in a useful way in this regard, and I turn off the existing files only, because I sometimes use, well, let's take a look here, I'll show you exactly. So on this, sometimes I'll do these topic links for say boredom, idleness. I don't necessarily have anything in those notes and I haven't necessarily actually fleshed those notes out, but they're a way for this to show up in the knowledge graph. So sometimes I'll use these in different places and then that will enable me to see different idea connections when I look at this graph view. So you can see here too, I, as I start to look into these different topic areas, I have relaxation, that these two notes are related to relaxation. Um, and then we also have, I, I guess one that I wanna highlight here is specifically the author. This is probably one of the most important ones that I use is the author. Now I'm looking for John Fitch. I can't search the knowledge graph, so maybe I can find it. But I know there are a few notes that are now connected to John Fitch. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just pop open John Fitch as a note and then I'll change the graph settings here. So I just did something here. There we go, gotta change my settings. So one thing with John Fish, you can see him here at the center, is that he not only wrote this book, Time Off, but he also spoke at the GitLab Remote Conference, which I attended just this week as of recording this video. And he shared some stuff that I put in this note over here. So now I also see that John Fitch is not just related to the time off node on my graph or that time off topic area. He's also related to remote work, which is also related to deep work. And so you can start to get a concept that these topic areas are tied together in some fashion. I don't know what to do with that yet, but that's part of the process of working with a vault like this. It's about exploring ideas. It's not about the vault telling you everything that's there, but it, it enables you to start to see, hmm, I wonder how these ideas might be connected together. Is there something there? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't, or maybe just the mere fact that these ideas being connected together gives you the capability to be able to formulate a thought around them in a different way. Maybe if you're writing a blog post or you're putting a video together, or maybe if you're working on a school paper, maybe you're just interested in exploring that topic area because it's something that you like. Well, this can help you to start to see different connections as you're processing through it. But the most important thing with this isn't necessarily, hey, Obsidian is this cool tool that allows you to do all these things, but it's the discipline of getting in the software actually taking notes, going in and crafting links. That's one thing that's become more apparent to me over time with productivity and note taking and of the sort is that we expect the tool to do a lot for us. But in the long run of things, it's really up to us. It's really up to us to have the discipline to sit down and actually do the hard work, which is thinking, which is writing, which is taking notes. It's hard work. It's stuff that we have to intentionally put ourselves on to do. Well, that's really it here for this idea of how you make connections with notes. It's really not rocket science. It's not too crazy. It's a lot of just sitting down and exploring. But what do you think? Have you struggled trying to create notes inside of Obsidian or create these types of connections? Let me know in the comments below. Again, my name is Justin with Effective Remote Work. Thanks for watching this video and I'll talk to you in the next one.